Let's chat a bit about the future of banking, international relationships with people, the morality, and what is uh, eh, kind of likely to happen, what's probable. I have a number of people who work with me. I've hired them uh, through a wonderful website, onlinejobs.ph. And this guy, John Jonas, who started it, uh, the website, I'm guessing he was probably a missionary in the Philippines with the Mormon church because uh, he's based out of the Salt Lake City area. He has a bunch of kids. <laughs> so forgive me for making the jumping to conclusions, but I'm suspecting that he, he did his mission there or had friends who did. And he said to himself, self, there are a lot of people here who are willing to work for lower hourly wages and they are wonderful, highly skilled people. Um, he, he did his research and looked around the world at other places uh, to hire offshore help at lower rates. And he kind of landed on the Philippines. He said, you know, these folks are hardworking, good folks. Just that the culture is, is a pretty good culture compared to many other places for hiring employees. So he started this website and, and you pay 70, 80 bucks, something like that per month. And then you get to go on and have, I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands of resumes, of profiles of people who you can hire. And he encourages you. Once you find your person, quit paying your monthly fee. So you probably only have to pay it for one month every time you want an employee, which is well worth it. Like it's a, a low recruiting fee. So anyway, this, this website, I've used it for years. And I have several people working with me who are from the Philippines. And I would like to pay them in cryptocurrencies. However, there are several challenges that I have to warn them about. And so far, we're, we're not doing that. One of the challenges is the probability of banking laws, of regulations that, that might already exist. I don't pay much attention to what various governments around the world say, even the one in the jurisdiction I live. I, I try to just stay out of trouble. And if it's something that I'm made aware of, I mean, there are what, hundreds of thousands of pages of laws. So there's no way I can know them all. But if it's something that I'm obviously thinking I might run afoul of this powerful group of people calling themselves government, then I, I shy away from that, just self-defense kind of thing. Here's what I think is going to happen, though. Governments, this group of people calling themselves government, each time that two individuals exchange something of value, the government would like a share of that. So what they think is, okay, Shepard has a hammer, and the other person has a screwdriver, and if they're both extras, and they want to trade a hammer for a screwdriver. The government says to itself, hey, how do we get 18% or 43% or whatever the tax bracket is? How do we steal 18 or 43% of the value of this transaction? And so there are a lot of laws in place. And generally, if it's under 1000 or 10000 or $100,000, the government doesn't have time to go after those folks that much. Now, occasionally, they will. It just makes good sense from a, a scare tactic propaganda standpoint to every so often pick the perfect model citizen, the school teacher who made a $130 exchange with someone and didn't report it as income, and therefore she's in huge trouble with the IRS and is going to lose her house. Well, then now 300 million other people in the United States are trembling in fear of the IRS and don't want to break any laws. So there's some publicity stunts like that. But by and large, they're not going to mess with you if it's not a large amount. Now, if it is a larger amount, or if enough people complain, and if you're randomly selected, whatever it is, there might already exist laws that say that if I pay Billy, the, the Filipino uh, video editing expert, if I pay him $5 to edit a particular video, then I should claim that and pay this government, or he should claim it, pay the government that is the master of him. I, I don't know exactly if those laws exist, but they will. I mentioned I would chat about the moral aspect of this. And this is what I, I'm asking you if I'm off base. I, I don't think I am. But it seems to me that when two human beings want to have an interaction with each other, no one should step between them 
and take away a portion of that transaction. Like what, as I say this, I'm like, well, that sounds ridiculous. Who would think that that would be a, an okay, a morally acceptable thing to do? And yet that's the world that we live in, controlled by, by so many governments all over the place and, and central banks and such. It, it is actually illegal to sell someone something, whether it's a service, whether you're providing them with your mechanicing services or, or something like that, or if you're selling them a vehicle, or if you buy or sell a piece of land. Every single time, two wonderful human beings talk to each other. Each of them think they're going to come out better off. You know, you, you want a dollar and I have a Pepsi and I would rather have the dollar. You would rather have the Pepsi. I, mean, I might have switched that around, but we make that transaction and we both come out of it saying, hey, I got a good deal there. I got what I wanted. And to think that when that interaction happens, we I, I sell you a Pepsi for a dollar, that some other entity should step into our relationship, our peaceful, our voluntary, thus voluntarism, voluntarist is what I consider myself. Somebody would step into this voluntary interaction and say, okay, a Pepsi that is valued at $1, we deserve 34% of that transaction. So pay us an additional 34 cents. Like, who thinks that's moral? Who thinks that's okay? This just blows me away. Um, I, I just wanted to chat about the morality of it a little bit. I mean, does that, doesn't that just sit wrong with you? And, and there, and I haven't heard any good arguments opposing this. I mean, there are arguments that say, well, yeah, but if the government didn't steal money from you, then who would help the poor people out and who would bail out auto companies and banks who would fight wars, who would enforce marijuana laws, like all of these things wouldn't happen if the government didn't steal that percentage of money. And because I want those things to happen, or I support those things, I'm willing to make a moral exception and not be a consistent intellectual thinker. I'm willing to make this, this concession, this exception to a moral rule, which you can't really do. A principle is a principle, but these people are saying, I'm willing to make this exception because I really, really, really want what the money will buy. Doesn't that just seem morally wrong? Okay, enough about morality. Let's get back to kind of what's going on. So what are my conclusions? Uh, what, what am I thinking at this point? You know, I think the thing to do is to kind of work within the system that exists. Um, if... I'm not going to be able to find awesome people who will work for real money, be that gold, silver, cryptocurrency, uh, that kind of thing. I'm not going to be able to find people with that kind of flexibility or financial sophistication who can change those things out to what they need, which is to get their electricity bill paid tomorrow. So since I can't do that, I'm going to continue paying by PayPal or Venmo or, or that kind of thing, uh, Google Pay or one of these uh, companies that's very much in bed with the government and has been forced to open up their books completely. I mean, I'm sure that PayPal has a couple cubicles or offices in their headquarters um, that have SEC and, and IRS and other agents who are looking out for domestic terrorism and other money laundering kind of problems. And those people are making them provide reports and and. Like, it's not like I can pay Billy five bucks and nobody ever knows that that amount of privacy, that kind of ideal, that humanitarian ideal that all human beings have a right to privacy, that doesn't exist where a strong government exists. So I'm going to continue using those modern, lousy, fake money platforms to pay. However, what I think I will do, because I can only do my one little bit one little tiny slice of a bit of a thing to not get in trouble legally, to be a, a business person, and yet also help kind of share word of, of real money or decentralized digital money. I think that I will give, there's something in the Philippines called the 13th month, and that is essentially a Christmas bonus. 
and so you pay a month's salary as a bonus. And that's just kind of a tradition. That's what most many, most companies do. So I think the 13 month, 13th month will be in crypto. And that is not something that they are absolutely expecting. They're, they have not been promised this. So it's not like I'm cheating them of the ability to pay their electrical bill. However, they will suddenly have a good bit of money sitting in a wallet and all they have to do is figure out how to exchange it for usable fiat money in their area. And this is going to create a demand. Now, I have very few employees working or contractors working with me. And so this isn't going to create a huge market demand. I'm not going to change the world. I'm not even going to change one small town. However, if other people, if other business people who have done a little bit of, I don't know, study about banking, central banking. Um, like hopefully most business people have read The Creature from Jekyll Island. Uh, and for those who have and who want a better life, a better world, hopefully they will think about this option and will maybe pay 13th month in digital currencies, not centralized approved ones, but decentralized, the more private, the better versions. Now, Monero is so hard to get money into and out of, like, I don't even know how to do it. So, like, I'm not going to do Monero, but something that's easy through Jack's wallet or something like that, while much less private, is at least a little move in the right direction. So, that's what I'm doing. Don't know that it's right. I don't know that it's wrong. Um, what are your thoughts? Have you found any good solutions uh, for when a law comes out in upcoming years that says you may not ha hire offshore people without filling out the U.S. government form DDS 13621 Bravo 7184 subsection C and paying your $500 a year registration fee to be a foreign employer. Do you have other solutions? Are you thinking of other things for when this time comes? Or do you think that I'm just being a silly, wacko conspiracy theorist and, and of course nothing like that will ever happen? The government is here to help us and the children and they would never do any such thing like that. Hey, what do you think? Please comment below.